Now that we've talked about some of the pre-processing steps and some of the data sets that you might use question answering on, let's talk about one very specific model that tries to read large amounts of natural language text and find answers in them. This is an example of the machine reading paradigm where a question comes in. Given that question, you use an information retrieval system to find relevant documents that could have the answer to the document. And then, given the question and the material that you've collected from the information retrieval system, the system reads over every word in the passage and tries to highlight where might that answer be in my collection. So let's dig in on the idea of a highlighter. Let's say that you're doing a reading comprehension test and you see the question, what team represented the AFC in Super Bowl 50? And so you have this question in your mind and you start reading through a bunch of passages. And what you want to do is with your highlighter, you want to highlight the phrase that answers the question. And in this case, it's the Denver Broncos. Thankfully, there are data sets that have exactly these question answer pairs, such as squad. And we can use that to train supervised machine learning systems that learn where an answer starts and an answer ends given a passage and a question. So let's work backward from the problem of taking our highlighter and highlighting the answer in our passage. We can think about this as a supervised machine learning problem a lot like the logistic regression examples that we saw before. We have a bunch of words and for each word we need to decide is this word the start of the answer or not. It's a binary choice. Similarly, we have a bunch of words and we need to decide for each word is this the end of the answer or not. So this is a lot like logistic regression. We have these binary decisions for every word. Is it the start? Yes or no. Is it the end? Yes or no. So what gets fed into that decision to decide what words are the beginning and the end of our answer? So first we have a vector that parameterizes the question. So as you're reading the passage looking for the answer in the back of your brain, you have what team represented the AFC in Super Bowl 50? And that's represented as a vector, so a d-dimensional vector that encodes what the question is about. You also have a vector that represents every word in your passage. These are the results you got back from the information retrieval system. So you have a big long passage, the result of your query, and you need to highlight words in that passage. You have a vector representing every word in that passage. And then given those two inputs, the words in your passage and the question vector, you have a parameter that says this is where we end the answer and this is where we start the answer given these question vector and the word vector. So this is our objective function. We have examples of where answers begin and end in passages and we're going to highlight that and backprop into the parameters P, W, and Q. So to backprop into these parameters, we need to define how they interact with the answer selection. So let's go into that. So where does the question vector come from? So this looks relatively familiar. This looks a lot like our deep averaging network that we had before. You take each of the individual word vectors in your question. You have a weighted sum of them. How do you combine those into a single vector? That's encoded in the scalar B. You have this parameter W that learns how to focus attention on the important words of the question. What parts of the question do you need to particularly remember in order to answer the question? Representing the question vector is relatively straightforward. Representing the individual words in the passage, that's a little bit more complicated. So let's talk about that next. So let's talk about the features that we're going to use to build up our passage representations. You can think about this as a big long vector that's the concatenation of several smaller vectors. So let's talk about what those smaller vectors might be. So first off, you can use pre-trained word embeddings from Glove, from word to vec your favorite word embeddings. So this carries a lot of semantic information. This encodes what words mean 
based on large unsupervised text collections. Another feature that we're going to use is just a really simple exact match feature. Is there an exact match between something in the question and the passage text? This is really useful, obviously, for finding relevant passages. Then we have a bunch of token features that represent information about what words we're seeing in the passage. Is it a named entity? What's its term frequency? What's the part of speech? All of this information can get encoded in a token feature segment of our big vector. And then finally, we also want to include matches between the question and the answer that maybe aren't exact, but they're related to each other. Let's say that you have the question text, who is the leader of the US? And then you have a passage text, Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Leader might be associated with president in terms of the dot product between the word embeddings, and United States might have a good dot product with US. They both appear in similar contexts. So you can encode this intuition by taking the dot product of the embeddings and using that as a score between question and answer text. But we're not just going to use those vectors by themselves. One of the things that we've seen in this class is that it's helpful to pass representations through nonlinearities and to project them into a hidden space so that your model can learn what representations work best. We believe that the representations we packed into this vector are going to be useful, but we want to combine them with each other to take advantage of context or combinations between individual elements of these features to do a better job of answering the question. So we're going to push these into a hidden representation. And the way that we're going to do that is by using an RNN. Specifically, we're going to use an LSTM, one flavor of RNN that we've talked about before, but we're not just going to use one LSTM, we're also going to use an LSTM going in the backwards direction. So we have two LSTMs, one going from the first word to the last word, and one LSTM going from the last word to the first word. This is called a bi-directional LSTM, and it allows the model to capture context a little bit more easily because you might have effects from later words that are easier to capture in a bi-LSTM than in the strictly forward LSTM. Notice that you're only doing this on the passage text, you're not doing this on the question, at least in this model. This allows you to apply this to things like QuizBowl where you might have partial questions. You can still score the questions relatively easily, but the passages you have all in advance. Each of these LSTMs has a hidden layer for every word. So to represent an individual word in a passage, we're going to use the concatenation of the hidden layers of this bidirectional LSTM. The goal is that this new vector contains all of the useful information from the big vector that we constructed, as well as contextual information from surrounding words that point to, hey, this is where the answer starts, or hey, this is where the answer ends. So just to refresh your memory, once you have this representation, this gets plugged into the vector, no, this gets plugged into the answer span selection as a vector PI. So the model that I talked about is DRQA, Document Reader Question Answering. This can be trained on passages from data sets like Squad, and you backprop through all of the layers to learn the P's, to learn the Q's, and to learn all of the associated weights that generate those vectors. And there's a very nice implementation of this available that you can look at. It's implemented in PyTort. It should be fairly familiar to you at this point. I wanted to talk about this model because it's a relatively simple model that has many of the features of modern machine reading systems. And it's a good starting point if you want to add in additional features. The creation of the vectors that feed into the passage representation could be augmented to encode additional information that you think is relevant. And there's this nice implementation that you can expand in the latest version of PyTorch. There are of course more complicated models out there and you should take a look at them to see if they're going to be useful for you. For example, Allen NLP has an implementation of BIDAF, which is a little bit more complicated. It still bears some family resemblance to DRQA, and you can use this relatively easily straight out of the box using the Allen NLP toolkit. I encourage you to try either of these out and to see how well it does at answering questions.